Now, I own a, a set of these um, Hornby uh, Locomotive Services Limited Midland Pullman Mark III, uh, what was it, High Speed Train 125 Class 43 pulled, the full set. And I was one day watching a video of the real thing by on Phil Clark's channel. I'll put a link to, the, to that particular video in my description. And um, he filmed it in the dark, coming into a station. And as it went past, it was suddenly quite clear that um, one of the kitchen cars, or buffet cars, dining cars, whatever they are, but there's two different types on the, the whole train, had a, um, a window that you could see through just about which on the Hornby one you can't so I've already actually f filmed this once and I made a mess of it so rather than you having to go through God knows how long a video of me getting it wrong and correcting it you don't really want to do it how I did it wrong you want to know how I did it right so this is the one I got wrong and on the Hornby one, well this is the Hornby one, but originally all these windows along here are painted out white and they look like that in daylight to the, if you don't look, you know, in great detail but at night this third window along on carriage M40802 which happens to be Hornby's part number R40174 is frosted glass. Uh, it's probably so that the people serving behind it have some kind of natural daylight at a particular point, probably because they need it. And it only shows up at night when the internal lights shine through. Now, I've so I've already, uh, you can see, I've already had a go at this and I didn't make a very good job of it. I actually tried to remove the paint while it was still on the bodywork, the glazing on, because that is actually a piece of painted glazing. That's one big glazing bar, or what do I call it, from one, one end to the other. So it didn't work out as well as I thought and I've had to retouch some paint because of what I used to remove the paint here. I masked round it and the, the uh, uh, what was it? Solvent alcohol I used to remove the paint, which is only IPA, which isn't that powerful. It still managed to creep underneath and make a, a mess all around this bit here. The frame. So I thought, hmm, I can do a, a better job of this. Uh, so I then remembered that my, my mate Steve Bateman in the Model Railway Club basically. He saw my train, liked it, so he went out and bought the whole set himself as well. Yeah, the only difference between our two is, and his is one, so if I turn it round, you'll see it's all white. Ooh. See? Now, the only difference say, between mine and his is that he has had, let's get it a bit closer, he has had uh, carriage lights put in wired from the track by AGR model railway store a guy called Dan who does that sort of thing in their shop in Leighton Buzzard where well, my one I've, I've added a Hornby st a standard mag light by this thing which I've done on a separate a, a, a video and so this, this these blue, blue and white carriages I've got quite a few videos of them amongst my uh, set of many videos and right so I got that wrong I found out by but by, but by, by doing it I found out how to do it right so to save wasting time you watching a video of how I got it wrong and how I repaired all the paintwork over three or four days of one coat after another I might as well eat, uh, show you how I, I did hopefully can do it very easily or oh, reasonably easily so I'll put my one aside. You don't need that. Oh, just just so you also know, what's this one? You might be asking. Well, 
on the train, it, probably when BR originally designed this, they were, there were two buffet cars. Or the, but on the other side, as you can see, it's quite a, di a different story to that one down there. And that is coach number M40801. So it's 40802 or 02, what you use. It's quite obvious when you turn them over which one's which, because this one well, it's, is, is all white in your collection. So ignore this one. But I thought I'd, I'd better show it you in case you, someone asks. No, you can ask questions. I want people to ask questions. Otherwise, no one comments. Well, I'll put that out of the way. Uh, I'll put this one. No, I better keep it handy. It might be written for reference. But keep it out of sight. Over there. Now, it is the third window along, which you can tell from Phil Clark's video. I did a, a snapshot of that, which he's allowed me to use in my video. And so I've marked it with that, with a bit of... Uh, the old Tamiya tape, you know, this stuff, masking tape. And what also occurred to me with these Mark III coaches is, hey, this, this body will fit either way round on here. It's not polarised for fitment, which it really should be. So, these um, panels down here with, with different uh, 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 cabinet openings and vents and grills and things, I'm not even though I'm not going around on the train, they look the same, but when you turn them over, I don't know what you can see, but they are different. So you see that one. Take note of any major features. And you compare it with this one, this side, should I say, in the light, they're not the same. So what I thought would be a good idea, not only have I marked the window so I don't, don't forget which one it is, but I'll put that underneath it on the chassis. So when the body's off, I know which way around to put it back again. And then you can just take that off. So first thing to do is to remove the body. Which, ha, ah, yeah, just out of interest. There's the pickups for the coach lighting there, I just noticed. Rather than using the battery box there. Steve's Steve's choice, not mine. That's a, a lot of effort and probably a lot of money. Anyway, so using a a tool. Well, this is what I use. I think it's a. I'm not sure if it's a dentist tool or an artist's tool for mixing oil paints or something like that. Anyway, it's a nice rounded end. It's very slim but not sharp. It's not cutting. You don't use the pointed end, but then again. There's so many dentist tools and tools like this on the market or you picking up at jumble sales and things like that. But that's what I use. Ooh, that goes in down the bodywork very easy. These are easy to remove. Now there's uh, eight clips, four on each side. Even though, according to the lighting diagram, there's only three on each side. That's wrong. There's actually four. And, then, and, and that mark there, that thing there, actually indicates the first one. It is right underneath there, so twiddle, up, twiddle underneath there, and I'll pull, I'll pull on the bogey. Look like that, and it come apart. Move it along, and there's another clip there. Is it coming? Oh, there we go, little click. Just twist, just twist the body a little slightly on the bogey slot, and eventually it'll come. I'll we'll hold it on here. Oh yeah, it comes. Can you see the lighting not very good. Hang on, tops up. And it comes out, I think. Ah. Now he's got Ah, that's interesting. Why did he go and do that? I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> he's fixed it to the roof rather than the lighting bar. Hmm. Oh well, I have to make it's not quite what I was expecting. Uh, we've got to cut that wind uh, glazing panel out. So I don't want that plugged in. No, it's hard wired. Mm. I'll turn it around and be careful then. But on yours, you won't have ha have that. So let's get it around here. Let's move that out of the way as best I can. I don't want to damage the wiring. So. 
just to make sure I get the right window again. I'll mark it on this side as well. Transfer the marking from one side to the other. I'll just get a bit of tape off. Oh, it's that one there. So it's that window just there. There you go, it's that one. Sort of pointing at it, isn't it? Now, no I actually haven't done that. Why don't I just attach it to the lighting bar along the top? <laughs> That's all me designed it, I don't know. Uh, it won't come out, right? It's held in black tack, but I think it's pulling that off. If you haven't got a little plug, you just plug it in, that'll make it a lot, would have been easier. Anyway, let's put a bit of tissue paper under here because I don't go marking it. I've got to bear down with a knife and put on sponge won't work. So I'll put a bit of this down like that. Oh, it can't scuffle about. And what we've got to do, let's see, what can you see? In Hornby and other manufacturers' uh, 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 fashion, each window has got a slit, alternative up and down. And what I've got to do is cut, cut, and prise that window out. And then I can work on it independently without damaging the bodywork on the outside, the paint finish. So, what I've got to do is score the window of glazing. It's not easy to see this. I don't know what you can see, but I've got to put it flat down. So it's that window there, get the bits out of the way. I'm just going to score it a couple of times, pushing down, not too hard, just enough to scrap, to put a groove, and then a cup. Let's keep doing it a couple of times. You're not going to cut right through, and then harder right the back one at the back here. What can you see? Yeah, at the back there, just there. You'll see what when it pop. Hopefully, pops out without taking other bits with it right let's keep it's about five millimeters four or five millimeters the cut into the groove do it a few times like that and now using that same tool this one this one also being nice and smooth won't scratch you can get underneath it and hopefully it'll go that's come away hopefully so right. get underneath it hold best to pin down the other window so that doesn't ping up as well so get under here this. I work my way around it I can hope it comes out without damaging it and my one did but will this is the question where does that bit come up if in doubt, cut it for a few more times. Push down on it. Try it again. Until it just clicks, hopefully it'll come apart. There you go, click that's gone. That's nice. So now you can work your way around to get to the back one. There you go, it comes up. That should, on the other one, hinge away. I'll hold it down like that and use my fingers. There you go, boom. Voila. And there's the window. And there's the paint. Yeah, it wasn't too too painful. Just blow the bits out. Right. So now what I'll do. Where's my phone? There you go. That's got an now a rough edge where they broke. So the guarantee it goes back flush and that. Uh, if you look cool it doesn't interfere with the other side so I'll remove some of that 
And then I'll glue it back and I'll show you how, the sort of glue I use to do this. Which I've got a special little vacuum cleaner for doing, picking all this filings up. But when I went to use it, it was flat. Well, it's on charge. There's not a lot of fettling to do with this. That's about it, really. Okay, get that out of the way. Now, the way to get rid of this paint is not by brute force. It's by soaking it and I'll time it to see how long this takes I'll probably have to pause the video while I'm doing it to um in ISO make sure it is IPA and don't forget yourself and, and use acetone no that'll melt the whole lot that will turn into a big blob of goo use uh, isopropyl which will attack the paint slowly and gently but hopefully not the um glazing so just leave it like that and the time is now five past four in the afternoon so I just, in fact might be better to put it upside down i'll do it an angle that's it get it underneath the surface and i just put something underneath it to keep it an angle like that so it's in deep deeper definitely covered like that get it definitely underneath underneath hmm. right so i will pause it so it's just gone five past four i don't know leave it in there for 10 minutes shall i I'll pause well it's actually been in there for uh, one two almost well just over 20 minutes because i couldn't get back to doing it but i did give it a little rub as you can see some marks at a quarter of an hour and it came off with a hardly any effort so I'll take it out now soak off the worst on the on the back end side anyway like that now it is a recessed window so there's no chance of it getting scratched I mean, let's get that out of the way and oh, I'll have to dip some of this in it I suppose oh so you can see it there's a one of those fine co co cotton buds from Tamiya I'll give it a a gentle rub with that. See, let it just. Yeah, see, look at that. You can't see what I'm doing. Look at that. This comes off. Like on the tissue paper. Don't press hard. Don't need to risk any rub marks or scratching. Let's get that off. I suspect maybe a disappear. A normal cotton bud would probably be better at this than this little thing. That's what I've got at hand. So basically it's just a cotton bud. Anything soft that won't damage it. I just give it a gin. I can wash it off in the IPA, can't we? I suspect that blue paint will probably come off as well. Will that come off? No, look at that blue coloured glue well come on we better um, get another bit of tissue paper which I've got over here and give a quick dip it in the IPA and just rub it off it rather than contaminate that's better should have done that in the first place you know <laughs> right Go around the edges and then I'll bathe it in it like that. Interesting one out. Put it back in, in the liquid. Don't need that in the way anymore. Swell it around. Tilt it to one side so it's got some depth. You don't want to waste loads of IPA by pouring it in the flat, you end up using Far too much material, substance, I'm going to call it. Uh -huh. 
Pick it up. Mm. Yeah, you can see the tint, can't you, on there? Now you can see against the white. So avoid touching the, the actual visible surfaces. If you can. Hold it on the outside. Flange. In a good word. Put it down there. Around the edges of the flame. Yeah, that's all right. See it in the light. You can see there's no scratches or rub marks. Get it just right in this lamp. That's all right. All right. Put that to one side then. We don't need that. There we go. I think that's all right. Yeah, pretty good. All right, put that down. Get that out of the way. Oh, no shot, go away. Out of shot. Now, now we've got to make sure that is completely clean. That surface. Because we're now going to give it a frosted look. Well, I'm not going to do that by. So basically, we want the whole glass, I call it glass, it was glass, to look like the um, the flange, which is uh, like a frosted light bulb, I suppose you'd call it. So I'll put that down. Now, the best way to do that, I found. Is using 3M's. I don't know what's going on here. Someone's broken it, dropped it, whatever. Okay, 3M's Scotch tape. No, magic tape. I don't actually say magic on it, but I know what it is because it's. I used it for uh, drafting, as in a drawing board. I'm a draftsman by original trade. In the days of drawing boards and film and ink pens and what have you. And this stuff was what. You have to cut something out and paste something in rather than redraw it. That was often the way of doing it. You um, you repaired it with this stuff. And unlike ordinary clear sellotape you do your Christmas presents with, this stuff will probably last 30 years without degrading. So it's perfect for a model and it's very thin. And it's got that nice, as you can see, matte frosted look. So I won't, I won't use this bit here because there may be dust that's stuck to the underneath a bit. So I'll get rid of that completely, that bit. Pull it out. Right up there. Cut it off. Put it to one side. And then we want a new piece. So make it big enough to go over the pane. This is the trouble. I'll hold it on the very edge then. On the teeth and cut it off. Now... Go away. Go away. So now I'm going to lay that on top of there, overlap it, and I'll have to cut round it carefully. Now we don't want any air bubbles, do we? Hang on, there's a dent there. I don't want that. See that dent? Don't want that dent. Just there. Get rid of it. Start again. Another bit. Hmm. Getting hold of it on the trouble without getting your fingerprints on it. I got it right up to there. Right. It does cut. These things do actually work, unlike some other ones. Basically, anything for 3M 3M makes very similar to Autoglim polishes. Whatever they make works. You're not buying out of a rubbish. It does actually do what it says on the box. All right. I'm not Start at the end here, so you can see properly. You see it starts going clear and work my way up with my finger. 
making sure I expel any air bubbles as I walk, waddle along like that. Has that worked? More or less. There's always one little bit that doesn't want to come out. Go away. No, I use my back of my fingernail, which is try and get rid of it. There's always one in there. And if you don't like it, you can always pull it off again. Let's do it again until you get it right. There's an air bubble there. What if this thing? If you press too hard, you'll you'll scratch the, the surface of the tape, and it'll start looking glossy. Get that out. Doing that. Why are they there? Go away. Go on. Bugger off. No, that starts to, to mark the tape. So no good. Do it again. <laughs> uh, peel it back. Grab hold of the flange. Yep. Just keep doing it till you get it right. Ooh. Want three hands to do this. Go on. I'm not using a fingernail now. Yeah. That's a bit better. Get off. <laughs> Let go. Yeah. Back of the fingernail again, if that'll work. I don't know why I'll get a little bit. I'm probably going to always lift it up again, can't I? Well, I'll keep redoing the whole thing. Let's do that. Will that work? What does that add? Nearly there, isn't it? There we go. That's probably, that's probably good enough. 99.9% .9 there. You can go on all, all day trying to get that perfect. Not so easy on camera, because I'm just wasting filming time. So there you go. Do that now. Hopefully this is sharp. And then I will cut round it. Pin it down. Probably post processing, I'll zoom into this bit so you can see what I'm doing. But you obviously know what I'm doing, I'm just cutting it. That's it. Because there's a, a ray, that's a raised area, and there's a little air gap underneath, which makes it easier for the knife to pop through and follow that edge. Like that. Get out that bit. Pick it up and turn it around. I'm putting the tape on the outside because I'll try to put it on the inside on that first attempt in that recess and that's a real pain trying to get rid of the air bubbles. I think a scalpel is more accurate than a, a modelling knife. The blade's thinner. Surgeons have to be accurate, don't they? Bits off. Turn it round. Let go. And make sure you have cut right through all the way round, otherwise, when you go to peel it off, it'll peel it off the window again. 
don't really want that now. Okay, I think I did do that side, didn't I? All the way across to the way. It does tear quite easy, this stuff. There you go. Hopefully this last bit will come off all right. Yeah, I did do that, I think, didn't I? Yeah. One frosted window. Okay. So, put the tools to one side. Out of the way. And we need the tweezers again. So now, make sure you. <clears throat> Got any dust and that out from under here from where you cut through it and residue come back residues of the modeling knife cutting through the glazing strip now this should now should just just pop back uh, like that Hear that click? So I turn it upside down and, and there you go. But obviously if we grab hold of it like that, it will pop straight back out again. It's nice that it's a nice click fit though. I suppose that's the advantage of designing things on, on computer aided design. CAD. That's what that, uh, where things are now. Super accurate with the tooling. So what I'm going to do just to hold that in place is put two little blobs, or oh, maybe three, well, on each corner, very small. Where is it? What have I done with it? There it is. Not super glue. That causes no end of problems, especially with glazing, with misting, especially when you think it's dry, you put it all back together again in an enclosed environment and the fumes go and coat everything. So what I'm going to do is this stuff, which is UV. It looks a bit like super glue. You give it a tiny little dog on where you want it. And then when you're ready, you can almost soak some off if you've got too much, unlike super glue really. And when you've got it ready, you just hit it with a UV, sort of, it's a bit like a small key fob really. <laughs> and it sets instantly. How easy is that? I've started using it to, instead of soldering, which you'll see in another video I'm going to work on, that's in post-processing at the minute, on a, um, a caboose. Well, it's not a real caboose, but well, out of the way. Right, so uh, where am I going to put this? There's no UV here. Now, this is what sort of thing you've got to be careful of. You don't really want this on by the um, patio doors here. Uh, which I know, here's a bit of this ma magic tape that we've had before. Yeah, use that as to put a dob down, and you pick up from it. A little bit because I don't trust squeezing it directly onto the model, it could suddenly come out with a big rush, couldn't it? So, put a bit of tape down, put a dob of glue. See, even the dob is that big, wipe the end off. Another bit of tissue, and it might. Where is it? Lighting's there, ah, stop. Got lighting wires everywhere banging into them. Where's the lid going? There it is. Put that lid on straight away. Oh, put it to one side. Now, using what really is a dentist tool, what have I done with it? There. One of these. What one of these that use for. Well, I've met, you've seen this many times in my videos, any those are existing subscribers. Um, but it's what you scrape your dentist, scrape your teeth with manually. <laughs> or used to before those um, uh, ultrasonic doodars and water jet thingies anyway so I get a little bit of that on the end like that tiny little amount and I'm just going to touch the side of the glazing oh, the hand gets in the way of the light tiny little amount I just touch the glazing just a little bit there, another bit of the other end. It's there. 
like that for it just forms a slight fillet for an eighth of an inch or less a little bit of the top up there and hopefully it's Put it there. This is probably what they, they use. They probably use super glue once, they don't anymore. This super glue isn't as fast drying as it as they make out on the on those old adverts gluing bits of rubber together. That's a lot of nonsense and all that. Maybe the original original was. There's a lot of types available now. So I've now dobbed it on there. So now with this, as you can see, you should be in the dark here, boop, boop, and he just, three seconds it says, so I'm going to point it at each one for three seconds, okay. First dob. That's more than three seconds. Uh, three seconds isn't much, so the longer the better. And that one. And that one down the back there. That one over there. Yeah, you can see it on film. You can even see it purple or through the through my viewfindery thing, screen thing here. There you go. And that should be all there is to it. Now, hopefully that is job done. Oh yeah, wipe that off before you forget. <laughs> Get it off of there. Get the tape out of the way. Did I wipe it off of there? I think I did, didn't I? Yeah. Right. Now, also, I'll take that tape off. Don't want that trapped on the inside, do we? Rotate it over. Get that out of the way. Now, on this one, obviously, I can't put it the wrong way around because there's that wire there. I have to tell Dan who did this, and there is actually a little way of... Well, I'll tell him, why didn't he use the lighting bar that was already there? It would have been easier. Anyway, okay. Right, put it around. Make sure Steve's wires don't get stuck in the passenger compartment. Put it down. Little wire there that way. It bends that way. Hopefully. I'll get it halfway on, get a bit of tissue paper over here. Let's make sure the ends are lined up. Turn it over. And uh, you can use that actually that there you can see the that clip uh, there should be four clips there just to prove it because hopefully say there's six there isn't uh, what can you see one two three four yeah not six Get back in there, you. Alright, so where's that tool? Yeah, so Steve's coach is a bit tighter fit than mine was. You can see this one there sticking out, so I'll get that underneath like that. Leave it out. Hopefully, that all go back together then. There you go. I wouldn't go pressing on these orange things. Use the um, grip it there and on the roof like that I would and you're pushing it back together again uh, but as coaches come apart this one's a very good another thing you can press on is the but is the bus is a what would be in another normal coach is a buffer beam that's quite a, a, a robust bit of kit there you go heard it click and these con uh, con connect couplers here are not the standard Hornby ones I don't know who they are probably back from one I don't know uh, 
So, there we go. Let's get that out of the way. Let's put that on there. So, for filming points of view, there it is. There you go. It's all obviously lined up. So, I'll now take that off. Now, if I do that, can I actually test this lighting? I don't know, because is, this is for DCC, his layout is. I have no idea whether that were lighting bars, aftermarket ones for DCC, work on a 9 volt battery, because they use 17 volts AC, don't they? Well, bung it on there, innit? Just turn this light out a minute. Let's see if anything lights up. Ah, well, if not, I can show you on my coach, which is the Hornby lighting. Let's try, try his first. Uh, turn all these lights out. Pardon my arm. Poof. Now, that's just the room lights now. Now, will that do anything? Which is the... That's this up. That's the pickup end, yeah. Mm -mm. So, it goes to one power wheels only. Ah. Does that do anything? No. Nah, it doesn't. Oh well. Another way. No, must be some AC jobby. Anyway, just for here's one I did earlier. Mine. And mine is um. Oh, I know. Mine's mine's magnetic, isn't it? Which end is it though? That end. No, must be that end then. Unless I've left it on and all the living. That's not doing anything. Don't tell me I've left it on and all the lights, all the batteries run out already. What's oh, with it? Oh, oh no, there you go. Oh, I'll do it. Ah, so that's what you see. And as you can see, it's got that misty, uh, frosty glass look, which is just what the real thing looks like. But of course, when you're down on the track line, you can see through it. But the trouble is, what Hornby has done, that is not the view on the real one. And you can see there is a table and seating on the real one because that was all white. That's all countertop and stainless steel sink and you can see a sink or something in there. So, well we haven't quite uh, done it right, but at least you get the window right. Yeah. So there you go, so you know. That does demonstrate the, the correct look, that misty, you can see something. As you can see, you can see the table, can't you? And the seats, just about. And a little black line that separates the seat from the table. The tables are actually supposed to be white tablecloths, by the way. So, turn that off. That, oh, actually, for the... Where is it? Put it on again. Put it on again. Uh, leave it like that. That would be good for the... Finishing of the video, isn't it? Let's take that one off there. This tape. Don't need the tape on there anymore. Prove my point. That idea works, I'm pretty sure. Oh, there's two of them. Now I'll put them like that. Oh, I should get them down here, should I? Close up, see if I can look. Is that better? Oh. Put the lights back on there as well. Ooh, that was glass in the past, wasn't it? And that one, that'll probably flash as well. And this one. I actually need a, another lamp, I think. But, but there you go. Oop, get that out of the way. Yeah, that was a lot, lot easier, and that worked. I'm glad about that. Thank you for watching.